Hello and welcome to the big fight, which for the next well, however many days are left, is going to be really about the elections, what is happening, all the various issues, all the various candidates, lots and lots of special shows coming to you on The Big Fight. But today we're going to be discussing one of the most crucial aspects in this and all other elections, the, the concept of money power, muscle power also, but also the money power which some people say is being misused. And we did hear the Election Commission saying they're going to be keeping a tight watch mm -hmm. on the expenditure. Has it always happened in the past? No. Is money power abused? Quite often the answer is yes. Can something be done about it and is there undue influence being played by corporates? Well, that's also an allegation that is being increasingly made. So where do we stand in all of this? We are going to find out over the next hour or two. Let me, let me start off uh, uh, right here in the, in the studio. Uh, Satinath Sarangi, it's great to have you with us. You've been uh, activist and campaigning for Bhopal gas victims now for what's it, decades, decades now. And so you know really a, a lot about what, what possible corporate influence can can do and and what why we may need to be careful yk modi it's a it's a pleasure to have you with us one of our Thanks. best known uh, in industrialists it's great to to, to have you with us uh, pinky anand's with us spokesperson of the bjp senior lawyer may also be able to tell us a little bit about the court cases uh, and and what the what the law actually says about all of this kaman mitra chinoy professor of the school of international studies at the jnu has also been strongly supporting the Aam Aadmi Party. I, I did take a calculated risk by having you next to somebody from the BJP, no, given no. what's been happening in the last now we've in the last so many days. Okay, okay. <laughs> but, but, but moving on, um, it, it's, it's actually great to have you with us as well, uh, Professor Jagdeep Jokhar, because you're the founder and trustee of the Association for Democratic Reforms. And some of the studies that you have done, I'm going to be quoting from them, and they really make very interesting reading indeed. Uh, from the Congress Party, Sanjay Jha joining us from Mumbai. Also joining us from Mumbai, Suni Lalag, who's an independent marketing consultant, mm -hmm. member of FIKI, uh, now seen to be very close to one political uh, political party. So, Sunil, thanks a lot for joining us. And Prasenjit Bose joining us from Kolkata. Can I just start with you, please, Professor Chokhar? Because I was struck by your last report, where you said that actually, according to what people are declaring, there's a certain amount that a Lok Sabha mm -hmm. candidate should be spending. You're allowed to spend 70 lakh rupees. There's a suspicion that they spend 10 times that amount, and especially after Gopinath Mundi and others made comments saying it could be 7 crores, it could be 8 crores. People have been questioning that. Now, you did a study where you said that of the 437 MPs who submitted their election expenditure statements, they actually said the average one of them spends only something like 14 lakh rupees. If that's the case, I don't know why we're having a show because there's no problem. Well, this is the number of MPs. In the 2009 election, we also analyzed the expenditure affidavits of 6,753 candidates. So I'm now moving from elected MPs to the candidates. Yeah. Out of 6,753, only four said that they spent about 90% of the limit. And at that time, the limit was much lower. It's not yes, 70 yes. lakhs, is it, right now? The limit and then was... 30 said they spent about 75% of the limit. So, 6,753 minus 34 is 6,713 said they spent between 45% to 55% of the limit. What, what's the penalty for submitting a false declaration? Submitting for a false declaration in affidavit is two years of imprisonment, which means disqualification. Okay. So can I can I now just try and understand? Let me come to before I come to the rest of it. Let me just ask the political parties this question. I'm not saying I disbelieve those numbers, I and mean, who am I to say I disbelieve those numbers? But it doesn't seem to make. It's not what the popular perception is. And if that's the case, fine. Every candidate there's a 70 lakh rupee expenditure limit right now. If at that time in 2009 most people spend 15 lakhs or 20 lakhs, then we are good to go. There's no real issue. For some reason, I find that hard to believe. No, you say you say you know you know when to challenge it. At the same time, instead of holding a nose from here, you actually come around from the other side and challenge it. So I'm I'm, I'm questioning. Okay, I'm not challenging it. I'm questioning it. Is that really a correct number? That is what is declared. That is what appears to be there. That is what we can say. Vikram, you don't expect me to go beyond that situation, do you? Okay. So that's the amount. And you know, ultimately, everything is declared. It is submitted to the election commission. Those returns are can be verified. They can be counterchecked. So just talking about it and saying I believe it, I don't believe it. Take okay. action. 
It's right. open to any citizen to take action. All right, fine. So let's 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 believe it for a moment. So therefore, if, if that's what the what the candidates spend, seventy lakhs is fine, and the election commission shouldn't worry. Nor should we worry about misuse of money, power, or bribing people or anything like that happening in this election. Because seventy lakhs should be more than enough. You think seventy lakhs is a fair? Seventy lakhs is a fairly large amount. Absolutely. In fact, the enhancement of the limits is a useful tactic <coughs> to bring forth the actual situations on hand and to actually address the market values which okay. are today. I'm. I'm okay. So, so let me just come up. So, Sanjay Chah, first of all, let me ask you that overall point: Is a seventy lakh amount that every candidate is going to spend? Does that sound like a fair amount? And if I'm sounding sceptical, which I must confess I am. About the fact that candidates did they really spend only 15, 20 lakh rupees in the last election? Um, do you in any way share my skepticism? If you look at 2009 and 2014, uh, I mean the entire digital landscape has transformed remarkably, at least at least in the urban part of India. And you know the media buying. If you look at media costs, they have also actually become a lot more competitive. Uh, so, for example, if if today a lot of uh, parliamentarians are planning a social media campaign. I mean, you actually make it viral. It, it is very low cost. In fact, for many, no, no. so you are saying from 14 lakhs, which is spent last year, is going to come funding. down to 10 lakhs. So you know, th there are no. So you are saying from spending 14, 15 lakhs last time. No, I'm just come saying down to 10 that right there now, are other no costs. There are other costs. Or there are other there are other costs that uh, the candidate may want to acquire, which is maybe in terms of direct marketing, which is. Perhaps in you know in hoardings and billboards etc. So I mean of course don't forget there are certain hygiene costs like transport and fuel which people have to spend on. But I do believe that an enhanced expenditure limit makes it more reasonable. It doesn't mean that a candidate is going to spend it, but it just defines a parameter that seems to be more fair and I think equitable given the fact that you have inflation, you have to look at higher cost. At the same time, it is coincided with new media platforms that are also relatively cheaper. Can I just ask you now? Here's one of the reasons of why am I skeptical? Here's one of the reasons I'm skeptical. According to your study, 418 MPs, 96% of those who filed, 418 MPs say they did not spend a single rupee on any campaign worker. 96% of MPs, not a single rupee was spent on any campaign worker. Um, something like 8% said they did not spend any money on any public meeting or any procession. 8% said that. That's yes, great. Five percent said they did not spend any money on any campaign material. No gates, no arches, no banners, nothing like that. And very interestingly, seventy-three percent said that the political parties didn't give them any money for this. This is all from their own pocket. You are also looking somewhat sceptical. I am completely sceptical. <laughs> yes. Everybody who files an election expenditure affidavit lies, plain and simple. And everybody lies. I said. Six thousand seven hundred thirteen candidates out of six thousand seven hundred fifty-three. Every candidate lies. Therefore, who is going to file an election petition against another person? Because everybody is lying. Okay. This is a huge lie being perpetrated on the nation. Every person who contests elections says they don't spend any money. But there is a hue and cry to increase the no, limit. Vikram, I disagree with that. The question is not. I thought you. I thought you disagree with that. I'm going to give both you and Let me finish. The question is not. No, I'll tell you why. Whether the increase from okay. 2004 and 2009 to 14 is justifiable. The question is why do such large 99 percent people say they spend half the limit? Then they want the limit to be increased. I don't know how to reconcile these two things. Okay. Quickly respond, Sanjay. Such blanket generalization is extremely unhealthy and you know uncalled for. There have emerged a lot more competitive and you know. It's a sweeping generalization. Hang on, Sanjay. It's a sweeping generalization. Well, here's a generalization. Ninety-six percent of MPs say they did not spend a single rupee on any campaign worker. This not is a also a sweeping chai. generalization. Not a couple. Not a not a glass. Not a samosa. Because That's what they're saying. Figures, where, are, where do these figures so come from? From so, the I mean, affidavits. You know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. These figures from the affidavits of the candidates. The of candidates. On one hand, the statement made by professor is that less than 50% anybody has claimed to spend. That is one statement he made. The second statement he makes, if I understand correctly, is that 96% people have declared that they have not spent any money on elections. How do no, 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 no. On, on a campaign worker, they are saying 96% said we didn't spend any money at all on any campaign worker. So Principally, but that that when you possible? have people work, of course it is possible. When you have okay. political people working for you, they don't charge money. I don't think you you see it across party lines. Okay, let me people ask somebody. Who, let me ask somebody who was with a political party in 2009. Not quite that anymore. Prasenjit Bose, 
are these so we are trying to figure out how much abuse of money power there is in this entire election i i want to make two or three points first, first tell all, me I how much money did the cpm the, spend in this. 2009 prasenjit yes. tell me a direct question how much did the cpm spend in 2009 on election campaigns in an average constituency you see i mean it's very difficult for me to say but i you have I, some I'm idea sure that they you. would have abided by the they would have abided by the election commission limit no I, cpm is sometimes see my my i have a i have a different yeah. i have a different point to make <clears throat> my point is first of all i think that this all these expenditure statements are completely bogus Thank and you. i will make Thank this you. sweeping generalization because <laughs> the, 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 abs- there is absolutely no scientific basis to even verify nobody no candidate ever has ever been disqualified in the recent past because of overspending so nobody takes this seriously okay let Hang us on. face facts okay do Fine. we do we really think do we really think that our elections the way they are structured it offers level playing field to all candidates but if it's if you are spending it 15 lakhs 20 lakhs then it is a level playing field i mean that i think most candidates would be able to manage you see what is the reality of elections in a, do you know cash is given to individual voters yes i'm not lakhs disputing and crores, the last time so, in 2009 so here's the issue so here's the in issue in 2009 the election commission in the in the press conference they actually announced the amount of cash they they actually counterfeited okay crores so, of rupees all right fine so let, let me just so we're still trying oh. to figure out whether there's a so look if you're going by the official affidavits there's no problem if we are questioning the affidavits and we are saying well maybe they're not exactly correct then there might be a problem come with the chennai the aam aadmi party has spent a lot of time right now um making some actually those are, they have been making some sweeping generalizations about how corporate influence and money bags are pretty much buying every election well if uh, candidates have a strict budget in which to operate then they obviously need money and i could believe uh, some of these candidates who said uh, they have not given any money to campaign people where these are cadre based parties and they have a dedicated cadre but in the case of other people i think their funding is coming from outside and the most likely funding are the corporates but the corporates are not fools to broadcast this but clearly if you i have seen a lot of election campaigns and every time more money is spent so if they were strictly within the margins then that could not be explained <coughs> so certainly the method by which we are calculating and the election commission is supervising needs drastic change otherwise this thing becomes a farce okay sunil alak let me get you in on that point before i come to mr modi and sangi the the basic issue now you know you know enough people in 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 industry and i'm going to ask mr modi the same question as well at the end of the day most industrialists would they be telling you that yes we do have to pay and we have to pay a large amount of money to various corporate houses some of it now is increasingly official and for once i am going to wave documents and saying that look here are some of just some of the <laughs> declared uh, uh, statements that have come from various companies saying yes we paid this to this uh, party or that party but then under the table and others is there a lot of requirement for cash and if there is a large requirement of cash that is coming in from corporates it would also go to show that the affidavits may not strictly be correct you know as far as i am concerned let us try and understand what kind of a nation are we only less than 3% even pay taxes it's impossible for us to believe that the average indian we have only 2.8% of the nation which pays taxes So let's not try and kid ourselves into and only forty three thousand people. Is, only forty three thousand yeah. people apparently people. get an income of more than one crore. One You'd crore. probably so find those people not, in southern Delhi alone. Yeah. Look, corporates. As far as we are concerned, the they've been the word lobbying has been made into a very bad word in India. Everywhere in the world, the corporates lobby. They have a right <laughs> to lobby for their own interest, but they are transparent about it. What we need to bring about. is a certain transparency in lobbying so you are saying it should be made very clear cut very simple you should say like like sunil alag says fairly transparently i support narendra modi every corporate should Correct. come out and say i am supporting this political party and i am contributing money directly to them that's and right. then take the chance that if the other party comes they're going to get whacked <coughs> that, no, that's no, no, no. can i Vikram, just quickly say one second Vikram, Vikram, let I, me I finish am, before one, one minute one minute prasenjit one Vikram, minute let I me am, finish i am prasenjit two seconds let me finish i am totally let me finish and i come to you let me finish my argument for fascism 
He is arguing not Prasinji, for democracy, but fascism. Yeah, yeah, Prasenji, two seconds. We'll come to fascism and all that in two seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah fascism will come. Look, as far as what is in America, Donald Trump will come and support the Republican Party. Obama doesn't go after him when he gets elected. When is the pol political world deciding to also become transparent? Tell the whole corporate world, be transparent about whatever you want to do. We are not going to come after you. All parties have to get together and say it. Okay. Then you will get transparency. Where are the political so, parties being transparent? So don't be, that so, you are compelling people. Okay. You have so to be transparent I, I, in every right, now, respect. Now let me allow Prasenji Whether you are a politician, in. whether you are in the corporate world, be transparent. First of all, India is not America. Does Mr. Alag know what is the poverty line in US? Transparency it is, is worldwide. Yeah, but what is what's wrong with transparency yeah. whether you are India or America? What, 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 what kind of... Be transparent. No, yeah. no, he, India you know, is not America. That I know. But can we all be transparent? The world wants to be transparent. Please hear me out. Okay. Please hear me out. Don't shout. Okay. The we are point hearing is, you, you yourself mentioned what is the number of cro uh, people who have uh, income more than one crore? It's only a few thousand. Now you look at the MPs. The same Association of Democratic Reform will tell you that out of 543 MPs, you are only having you, you know almost 300 MPs have uh, income and assets uh, more than one crore. So you are having a very thin section, very thin section of the population which are getting represented in parliament today. Okay. And it is precisely because of the kind of, it is precisely because, you see today, I want to campaign in the election, will Mr. Ambani provide his jet for me? Go ask him. Why don't you ask, ask him? Why don't you go and ask him? Will the election commission give a jet for me? But you are not pressing him tell you no. Ask him and tell him no. the next prime minister of the country, no? Why don't you ask him and he'll tell you no? Ah, so you no, can ask the him. point is, no, yeah, no, but my point is that that is where the level playing field argument comes in. Okay, fine. Mr. Modi will but only life finance is not a those level who will serve Mr. Modi. Fine, but fine, fair Ambani enough. Mr. Ambani will finance those who will serve anywhere. Mr. Fair enough. Ambani's fair interest. Enough. Fair enough, life is not a level playing field. The CPM may give you Politics a ticket, it's not, not like you give me a ticket. Life is cruel. Okay, Mr. Now, let me come to you. Mr. Modi. This is the other Mr. Modi. Yeah. So if you look at the perception, what's really happening is that a little bit of electoral funding is above the ground and transparent and being declared to everybody. A vast river of money apparently seems to be flowing underneath the surface. And that is where a lot of corruption comes from. That's where a lot of illegitimate lobbying, perhaps illegitimate lobbying, which is influences and others may be coming mm -hmm. from. And it would be good to clean up the system. So perhaps you could first shed light on us as to what the reality of the situation is. No, first I, what I would like to say is you know, the gentleman who was speaking from Calcutta, I think. Prasenji, yes. Yeah. It seems that uh, the business has become a bad word in India again. They don't realize the business provides goods, provides services, creates jobs. So what we should be not, what we should be against is nexus between some, some politicians and some businessmen. So you should and be why against crony capitalism and not against capitalism Obviously. itself. That's your point. Otherwise, who will create jobs? Fine, fair enough. But I, no, who's who no, is everybody is beating. Days? No, everybody. The this gentleman just the made some names. Oh, you are giving planes, this, that, as if planes are being flown for the first time, or helicopters for the first <coughs> time are being flown. Yeah, but I but think they have they must have been paid by the party. Yeah, I'm so, assuming. So, so there are two separate questions. So One is that no, is all of this let being me, let me complete. <coughs> no, there are no, the, there is the, no separate question. It is the same question. I, no, I know. I'm. <laughs> can I speak? Yeah. The point is, you just mentioned about the money being spent by the candidates, but money being spent by the party, which is the bulk of the money, you have not even touched. Okay. So the major issue is political funding of the parties. Parties run round the year, five years. They but don't surely, run only at… But can I just ask a legal position? First of all, let me explain. The limit is not set by the election commission. Election commission is consulted by the government before setting the limit. The limit is set by the government on a recommendation by the election commission. Therefore, the limit is a political decision in the final analysis. Now, if the expenditure of political parties is not included in the expenditure declared by the candidate, right. the lawmaking bodies like the parliament have to answer for, which, right. which consists of all political parties. Yes. Let me clarify. These decisions are made by the parliament pretty much unanimously by all political parties put together. If you look at the political parties' income tax returns, 
and their statement of donations that they give to the election commission, only 20 to 25 percent of the total income is from known sources, which include corporates. 75 to 80 percent of the income are from sources which are not known. So the financing of Mr. Modi, Mr. YK Modi is very correct. It is the funding of political parties which is the key. And 75 to 80 percent is totally opaque. No, no, but it's not no, I, I'll, opaque. I'll, I'll give you a Can I just, Mr. Wally, one, 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 one second. I just, no, no, no. I'll give you suggestions the, the, the on the situation is. Let, let, let us just that, answer. I'll get Sanjay to respond to this. The, the second simple question is that all donations received by parties are declared to the election commission. But only all, about 20,000. Only no. above 20,000. That is the law. So if there are transactions under 20,000, they their yes, source sir. is not disclosed. That is the only thing. If movement has to be made in that direction, 20,000 is not a very large amount. Because I mean, in today's world, we are talking about contributions over 20,000 being declared, the, the sources being declared. Under 20,000 is the individual donations coming from wherever or whichever sources. They are okay. the sources. No, but can I, 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 who has made this law? There are parties who say that we earned 800 crores, but there was not a single donation more than 20,000 rupees. Samajwadi party. Is this believable? So the regulation of 20,000 rupees is completely inappropriate in today's day and age. Okay. If can I just explain 20, 75 so to 80 can I can I just can I just get your viewpoint then, Mr. No, Modi? I, that I, so I as a result, suggestions. would corporates also be happier yeah. and slightly more transparent? No, no, I'm, I'll, I'll give you two suggestions where this system can be corrected. First is what Sunil mentioned about the transparency, especially in natural resources allotment. I cannot understand why government feels shy, whether it is allotment of land, allotment of mine, or whatever. Let it be auctioned, let it be clean. The but point you made. Where does make money from? But that is not my business, so don't blame the business I'm, 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 I'm giving you the answers to no, my I'm only down. saying that wow, they find critical. a punch bag in the business, as a business wants non-transparency. We Vikram, want transparency, Vikram, let it be Can I say something here? Just two secs. Just and to second the end, is, finish what second is, it is not only at the time of election parties need money, parties need money to run for five years. Okay. So you must, according to me, have state funding of election. We are spending 5 crores every year on every MP and we are supposed to spend 70 lakhs in 5 years. So what is the big deal that government cannot fund the election and also there should be much more transparency so in political funding. Okay. Can I just ask you now, yeah. the way the system is working, right? we have heard now various contours of it. Individuals are saying we can only spend this much, the party is spending the money, we are not quite sure where the party is getting the money. The way the system works, do you think it is leading to unfair and undue influence on some parts? And is it the one of the root causes from where all the corruption comes from? Exactly, because you see, first of all, let us understand that even if this is made transparent, I know that the corporations are opposing that our name should not be declared as to who is giving how much money. But even if it does, we know that routine funding by corporations of political parties goes on anyway. So what we are talking about is whether we should make this legitimate. Now if you see the records from 2004, the party that has got the most money from corporations and business houses is BJP. And the Congress is not very far, just yes. maybe 20 crores less. So okay. these parties, why is it that A, when you have a situation in which an overwhelming majority but of But it's not surprising that those parties would get the most amount of uh, the donation because they are the largest parties. Who else is the I mean, of but in terms this, of donations, I mean a party like no, the, no, 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 but that is if the, the BJP point, in the right? Congress, the BJP in the Congress <laughs> between them no, get about 270, you, 280 seats. So they are the ones who should have uh, more actually in the last few Vikram, Vikram, just let me complete. I am saying, please remember that these are organizations which is sole objective of making profit. So these organizations won't give a huge chunk of money if they are not getting anything in return because their their lifeblood is money is okay. profit so can i can i just put that to sunil before i, I come to amazing i mean this yeah, kind of argument that sarangi is <laughs> no. saying that you know corporate funding is only meant for commercialization are you is he possibly saying there should be no corporate look funding look at ambani just and gas no, no. prices the question is not that's yes, a separate no, aspect where there's, there's an yeah, issue we deal with that no, no, but when you talk about corporate funding i fail to understand transparent just a wait 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 everyone's feeling at the transparent 
Everyone's giving that name. Sunil, Sunil Alak. At the end, Sunil yeah. Alak. At the end of the day, yeah. the point that is being made by Mr. Sarangi is that if there is corporate donations of any type, uh, and it comes out, it's because there's the expectation of a quid pro quo. Now, if that's the case, by the way, I have to say it happens in other countries also, even in the United States or others when there's corporate funding coming in. It's with may well be with the expectation of a quid pro quo. Yeah, but, is there an expectation but, of a quid pro quo? But corporates are not NGOs. I mean, is politics relying on on NGOs that you're saying there's going to be no quid pro quo? Why do you fund? If it is transparent, everybody knows why are you funding. Let me try and explain to you the number of corporates who are now moving out of India and going and investing abroad is because of lack of transparency. If they really wanted to lobby and start paying politicians and bribing, they would have continued to live in India. In the last two years, everybody is moving out. The bulk of corporate world wants transparency just because one or two people are not doing it. Please don't paint the entire corporate world with what you are saying. Vikram. Everyone wants to move out and do no, work no, no, in Vikram. Malaysia or X, Y, Z because they are transparent Vikram, I, over please, there. Please allow Here me to we, say have, we, we get vindictive about those who gave. If you don't win, we, we will go after you. Why did you not pay for me? Why did you pay for someone else? So there has to be a change in the politicians. We have to change the political system. You know how many years and the corporate take? world is really wanting to change. Please remember, as Mr. Modi said, uh, YK here, who said, look, we are the ones who are going to give employment. We are the ones who are going to set up factories. Okay. We are the ones that are going to help in all the right, development. All right, all right. If we you are going to keep selling please, us, please, then we'll go. Prasen, please, every politician Prasen, 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 Okay, Mr. Alag, we heard you. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to, trying to yeah. move on. Prasenjit, you have to, to respond to that. You know, I don't want to respond to Mr. Alag. I mean, I think what Mr. Alag is saying is so shameless. He is basically saying shameless. that corporate should be allowed to twist India's policies. Transparently allowed. They should be allowed, allowed. Right. Should allow. Allow. Only do it transparently. Transparently. No, no, so what do you want is transparent. So I don't want to the engage with this kind of cynical and ridiculous views, basically. Please, but I want to say something. Where is the, the funding views that are equally ridiculous? What is the context? I'm not going to accept what? who's making these what silly statements. What is the context? What am I saying? Be the... transparent. If you are transparent, everybody knows why you're doing it. You can criticize me then. It's only when I'm not transparent and you don't because... allow me to be that we have a problem. So okay. don't get into all this. Just CPM is the only honest party <laughs> in India, is it? Vikram, Everybody else is a crook. Vikram, well done. Vikram, we okay, are on, yeah. having, Wake up also to the reality of the world. Let me Vikram, get here, Prasenjit. Come back here. We are having these back elections here. in the... Yeah, Prasenjit, quickly. We are finish. having these elections... Yes, we are having these elections in the backdrop of a huge anti-corruption movement that we have had in our country. We have seen huge corruption scandals all of them involving big corporations. I don't want to name them, but you know, all sectors of our country today, from coal to spectrum to telecom to you know what not, every sector of this country and every big corporation has been okay. involved in this massive loot of resources. I, I, I would like today what, you are saying the, make this transparent. What do you mean? Okay, there, fine. We've heard you. There should be state funding of elections. We heard you. We've heard you. We've got that point. Can I just no ask you? No corporate funding. Why should corporate funding? Okay, we've heard you, Prasenjit. They've got your point. Sir, can I just ask you one question now? Even the Aam Aadmi Party, which has been talking a lot about, you know, how to... They, it's not that the Aam Aadmi Party or Mr. Kejriwal's NGO are averse to corporate funding because there is, there's a list of people right out here who given money for the, the donated in their personal capacity or from their corporate capacity. So it's not that you're completely averse to it. I mean, We're against Party. crony capitalism. We don't want... So how do you know that if somebody who... If one of, any one of these people, I don't want to read out their names, that if any of these people has given a donation or given <coughs> money to the Ahmad Party, how are you so sure that they're not doing it with the expectation that simple. you'll help them? Say X has natural gas or Y has a coal block. Okay, one then of the guys who's given you 3 lakh rupees has got a... One of the guys who's given you 3 lakh rupees has got... And again, I'm not going to give the name away. He's got, let's say... a auto company or a, or a, mm. a tractor company. Fine, but... Now, he's got an interest. You know, but, so, should, but you've accepted you know, the money, so therefore you don't It's not only the money. Then? It is the fact that if some people get a lot of corporate funding and others don't, then you don't have a level playing field. No, so I, there, I, there should I be, there should be some kind of control on You want that government. everybody should get 10 rupees each. It should be distributed like... No, we're not saying that. Some difference. No, no, I'm saying <laughs> the moment I say you take corporate money, it means I say up uh, the, uh, up the level. But the level should not be up so much that in a country with okay. disparities of wealth, okay. there is, well, someone is okay. unequal. Okay, okay. so level playing, the level playing field argument. Let me there get you. Are, <coughs> there are a couple of things to note here. The discussion of corporate funding for political parties and elections and the undue influence that that perhaps exercises has been around for a long time. 
the problem that i have personally faced in the discussion is corporate say Sir. political parties do not want to accept check political parties say corporates do not want to give checks they both blame each other the question is the lack of transparency or the desire for lack of transparency is certainly there on the part of political parties in my judgment which may be questioned of course okay now the lack of transparency or the lack of intention to be transparent to a certain extent is also there in some corporates yes. but transparency is the answer to respond to prasanjit or uh, absolutely kamal's points there could be a system that if a political party is gets a total of 100 crores no one corporate will give them more than 5 crores so that undue influence you, know, what, what kind you of, cannot what kind you of cannot bank roll the total party okay so no party should be bank roll now okay this is How all but this is hang on this is slightly How easier to say for that? a big party you will like ensure that okay it what is the no role. this the, the precondition is that political parties finance political just parties, a minute they will the, suffer the precondition is that the financing of all political parties should be transparent yeah 80% but 80% unknown sources the, is the, not the acceptable the solution you are making might be easier for a bjp or a congress who have a large number of people wanting to bank let them, them funds. let them share for their smaller parties sometimes no, no, we have only one or two people there is a catch people. let but, them but, share but their i don't know where this let, democracy is going to some as i said some kind of basis of communism is it that you are going to determine how much amount should come no, to no, each political party let me get an agree which corporate no, no, is going to go to Vikram, which which political party is, the direction is going so to be so i agree i agree you may not require the amount it should be transmit sanjay jha let me just get you in on this but point with the, the congress economy what do you want to have S sanjay the fact is that yes the bjp and the Cong and the congress party get 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 more than the lion share of corporate funding and perhaps that's because the two of you are the largest party so to that extent it's fair but why should there be any aversion from any political party to making the entire process far more transparent and also assuring corporates that we will not victimize you if you if you given money well, to one of our rivals businesses in india need to grow on being competitive uh, not by being connected uh, yeah, and you know as somebody yes, rightly mentioned Mataro before statement. that what astonished a lot of us actually was the fact that the big business themselves uh said that you know they were not happy with disclosure norms there you go there you go yeah. 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 and i began to understand why believe that just because you fund x or y they that, that that you know there will be some vindictive response i think is a little far stretched but there is a is larger issue that i think we need to look at today which is that you know the companies that actually have become very controversial and have been dominating headlines do come from areas where you know they are alleged to have benefited uh, willy-nilly from successive governments uh, which are related to natural resources which is whether spectrum or coal or as we talk about gas at the moment now these are issues that as a country we need to debate at a more i would say at a more intellectual level at a more realistic okay, level okay so we won't do it right because now because the big is that all political <laughs> parties no they to want to be I mean, we, we, we can are, get we are keen everyone is keen to make the highest level of disclosures okay i are they keen now, mr modi let me ask you mr please, modi let me ask please. you this question if corporates are reluctant mm -hmm. to have full transparency in what they are doing, not they are not reluctant they are not but i'll give you two reasons why they might be reluctant but some corporates <laughs> might be reluctant no, i don't think i don't think we should make a sweeping fact, no, no, i'm, I'm only it. telling you because you initially made a point which was the answer to the question yeah. that let there be transparency in government functioning nobody is afraid then Okay, so they are. Why are they afraid? Some so of them so are I'll afraid. So I'll tell you why they are afraid. Has discretion. I'll give you. Two, I'll give you. Two, yeah, I'll give you two reasons why the corporates could be afraid. Yeah. One reason why they could be afraid of making of having full transparency of the money they are giving is because the money is come from. You know, if it's a sack of cash that is coming, how do you make it transparent? Because it's a sack of cash at the end of the or trunks of cash or whatever I, it is. I think that these are very. Old whatever it is that they're using these days, okay. I don't want to get. I mean, let's not go into the sordid yeah, details. Yeah, they're using credit so, cards. Well, okay, credit card. The credit card is actually slightly <laughs> more Official. transparent. That so okay, not. trunks or uh, bus what loads of cash, whatever it is. So one is that it's cash, so they they can't disclose it because it's unaccounted for. That's one possibility. Second possibility is that they say, look, if I'm giving this money to the Congress Party and the BJP comes, they will come after me. And if I'm giving it to the BJP and the Congress Party comes, they'll come after me. I can give it to both, but then if a third person comes, they'll come no, after Vikram, me. You can normally, your question is one second. One second. So normally, corporates go both ways. Can I answer? Yeah. Sometimes they put their feet on all boats. Please, please. Can can I answer? the point is we are focused only on the names which are floating in the in the press for natural resources companies 
80, no, I think no, this applies again, to everyone. 80, but no, no, it does not out. apply. 80% of the businesses have no correlation with the government. If you make Is soap, quite true? yes, if you make soap, if that you make oil, if, if you are an infrastructure company, only infrastructure, company, only infrastructure no, company, only natural Mr. resource company, infrastructure, company. Real natural estate, resources, Mr. Modi, you, you have could be, you, have CIA, you could be any company, you have the oil I, I know, every second know. company right now stuck in a tax case or the other. I, I am only saying, sir, please, the answer is why should I be afraid if government is transparent? Whichever government comes, let it come. I am not bothered. The point is, it has become a fashion to what the, that what all business is bad. Now, if money is coming from abroad, nobody is bothered. If there is a foreign company investing, nobody is bothered. It's the only Indian business who is bothered, as if they are not they are contributing for some charitable purpose. But okay, actually, the foreign the foreign company should also be okay. Now, can I can I the no. uh, What I wanted to say was that it is on record. The CII has actually told the government that it does not want names to be disclosed, political contributions. So it is the corporations that are saying we don't want transparency. First, that is on record. Yeah, the CII has informed. No, but Fiki really? has said very clearly there should be transparency. I so let me be very yeah. clear. I mentioned so Confederation no, CI, of Indian Industry. Uh, but that no, does not represent the whole of India. It's one of the. Let's not get into a derailed into a CII versus Fiki. No, no what I'm saying here. is the by CII he no, can't paint the whole industry, I, whole business, okay. small and medium industries. So okay. Sunil, Sunil, the point here and is that it is industry which doesn't want the transparency either. No. No. Let me tell you, if the industry doesn't want transparency, it's only it's frightened of vindictiveness. See, now today what has happened in is the media is very active. Let's assume that an industrialist comes and gives a lot of money to Congress and BJP comes to power and BJP doesn't give it a project on which is not a transparent system, media will go after him saying, oh, because he's been giving money to Congress, you're not giving it. You will compel every politician to be transparent. It's about time today okay. is the opportunity now so know, for everyone, both the know, political and everyone to get transparent. Then you know, then then you know how to clean. Life will be okay. As Mr. So Modi Sunil, is saying, Sunil have an option. So Sunil, you have a simple way of cleaning it up now. If there's a perception right now that Mr. Modi is coming, not just Mr. Modi, yeah. rather Mr. Modi is coming to <laughs> right. power. So uh, therefore, then if, all you have to do is to get him to make a statement saying, "Don't worry, I won't be vindictive, no matter whom you give the money." Yeah, why to. why I does not, it not only so make, make a statement? I think media will have a role to play if anyone okay. does it. you have a word to say in two sets. All right, can I just get you to finish what you were saying? Then I want to turn to the yeah. When you have a situation when all this is legitimized and transparent. You are going against the very ethos of the constitution. No, so you are saying we must remember. Hang on, hang on. You are saying that that, that, that if you if you make because corporate this, donations this transparent, <laughs> you are saying what Prasenji is saying is yeah. saying to some extent that if you allow yes. it legitimately, Absolutely. if you allow it legitimately, you will have yes. even then more. Uh, uh, there, is a, there is a slight One difference side. here. If yes. you make it transparent, then the legitimacy or illegitimacy can be. Seen, seen and discussed and okay. pointed but, out. But, they, yeah. but he and Prasenji no, have no, a different no, no, point. No, 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 transparent working of the government whereby allocations of any kind natural resources infrastructure blah 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 are made on defined guidelines obviously there will be no room for vindictiveness against Correct. corporates so therefore corporates will not okay. be discriminated against Prasenjit. even if a party wants or thirdly Vikram just the last black money Correct. that has to first come in BJP all, has been fighting for the all, black I money to be ended and to be brought in from all the various sources first that of are all, hanging around okay. that is the real key of half Vik the trouble in any case okay Prasenjit can I just come to you after the break I'm just taking a break I'm taking a break. I'm just coming back to you after the break. I promise you. I swear. I'll go to the audience and come to you. So, quick break right now. You, then you, we'll be back. Promise I, promise, I promise. I promise. My okay. hand on my heart. I will okay. give you a chance I, I, to I speak, Prasenjit. <laughs> I'm going to take a very quick break. We'll be back in just two minutes.